In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Ave Maria. Amen. At this time in the life of the Church, we cling especially to our Blessed Lady. Have you ever seen a child in a supermarket or other crowded place who's lost his mother? The other day in our mother and toddler group, I saw a baby who for a moment didn't know where his mother was. He cried, worried and frightened until his mummy picked him up to comfort him. His sobs quietened down and he was at peace again. Today in the church we may be worried. We wonder who will now be our Holy Father after the resignation of our beloved Pope Benedict who is no longer able to carry on. We see all around us people attacking the church and perhaps us personally. They say to us, what about that cardinal who committed those sins? Your church is no good. Your priests are no good. Your bishops and cardinals are no good. Your pope is gone. We think you should have a pope who allows gay marriage and contraception and married priests and women priests. We might worry like a baby who has lost his mother. Yet, like that baby, we have no need to fear because our mother is always near, watching over us. Against evil, she is powerful, terrible as an army in battle array. Just after the election of Pope Benedict, there was a story told by a friar on EWTN. In the sacristy of St. Peter's, he met one of the exorcists of Rome. There had been a very difficult exorcism the day before. And finally the demon said, she told us to speak. She, of course, was Our Lady. Demons cannot bear to say her name. They just have to say she. So the exorcist said, what did she tell you to say? And the demon replied, we tried to stop him. The demons tried to stop Pope Benedict from becoming Pope, but Our Lady protected him, and he brought great joy to the Church. We can be sure that the powers of hell are now trying to ruin the work of our Holy Mother Church. The spiritual battle will be intense, so we must all of us take arms, the weapons of the Rosary, devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, loving adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. How foolish if we think that we can win the battle without our Blessed Lady. Why should we try to fight on our own when she is so ready to help us with that power which flows from her supreme sanctity? Alone of all the human race, she is free from all sin, free from the curse of original sin which afflicts all of us, and free from any personal sin. The power of her holiness is beyond our imagination. If we but ask her, she will take us in her mantle and overcome the foes who surround us. So let us consider the sins of those in high office in the church, our vocations director in this diocese, Father Stephen Langridge, recently had this to say to young men who are considering the priesthood. How would we react if we were to discover that our father was committing adultery? I'm sure there would be a range of emotions, including anger, confusion, and great sadness. But would we blame our mother? No. We would cling to her more closely. We would try to console her by the warmth of our love. We would stick with her. When the church has been wronged by one of her members, it should evoke within us a desire for reparation and a determination to respond with greater fidelity. Our fidelity is shown in little things, in getting up on time, in doing a day's work, in looking after our prayer, in our service of our neighbor, in our determination to turn away from sin, this isn't a time to get disheartened. It's a time to be more faithful. That is what our Lord is asking of you today. 
please be assured that I am praying for you. Whenever a priest talks like this, people get angry. They accuse him of some psychological weakness or hang-up for referring to the mother, whether it's our Holy Mother, the Church, or our Blessed Lady, the Mother of God. Notice, too, that they don't like our holy women saints, Santa Francesca Romana, the saint whose mass we celebrated today, is in some place, some places the focus of ridicule for her penitential practices. And do you know which saints are hated the most? The virgin martyrs, like Saint Agnes, Saint Cecilia, Saint Philomena, Saint Maria Goretti, Saint Gemma Galgani, and blessed Alexandrina da Costa. A combination of purity and the willingness to renounce this life for the sake of Christ brings sickness to the mouths of those who hate the Church. I hope today we have a relic of Blessed Alexandrina. She jumped out of a window to escape from men who wished to violate her purity. Her injuries caused her great pain for the rest of her life, yet she became a victim soul praying in union with Christ for the salvation of the world and for the individual salvation of each and every sinner. We invoke her intercession today for the cardinals in Rome and for the whole church. <coughs> when we see the storm unleashed against the church in the newspapers and on the television, and when we think that one sinful man made of the same stuff as us will bear the burden of being for us the Vicar of Christ, we may tremble, wondering if the church can survive. But did not Jesus say, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. We put our faith in Christ and trust him, <coughs> yet still we may be frightened. But we're not alone because we have Mary the Immaculate, the Morning Star, who has a motherly care for the Church, which her Divine Son founded as the Ark of Salvation. She is our Advocatrix, the one who stands by us, not only to encourage us, but to help us powerfully by her prayers. As Pope Leo XIII said, many and well-known are the proofs of her solicitude manifested from time to time, even in a miraculous manner. In the times and places in which, to the Church's grief, faith languished in lethargic indifference or was tormented by the baneful scourge of heresy, our great and gracious Lady, in her kindness, was ever ready with her aid and comfort. My dear people, do not make the mistake of thinking that your prayers are not worth very much. Our Lord himself prays the prayers of the poorest and most insignificant people. The publican who knelt at the back of the temple and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The poor widow who only had a couple of pennies to give. These were praised by our Lord more than the great figures of his time. And it is the same today. Many of you have adopted a cardinal, a simple gesture organized by lay people. You're one of nearly 400,000 people around the world who have promised to pray for one of the cardinals. And the cardinals themselves have noticed. They spoke with gratitude of this initiative in the general congregation in Rome the other day. Your prayers are valued. They're important and they are powerful in the sight of God. So I invite you now to hail our Blessed Lady with me for the sake of the Church. Ave Maria. 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 